Charles Cheval. Thank you, Mr Chairman. I want to uh, take a call to deal with some of the uh, issues that were drawn to the attention of the Commerce Committee uh, in its consideration of the legislation uh, by the Regulations Review Committee. But before I do, could I just um, uh, advise the Minister and the Chair that there were two issues that my colleague Leanne Dalzell raised, uh, and I know the officials will have uh, made a note of them, but it would be good if he was cognisant of them. The first was uh, whether or not when he does take a call he could uh, confirm the number of times that applications are actually made under the Conservation Act uh, in respect of the matters that are dealt with by the legislation. Uh, the second is I think it would be useful as and the number of objections uh, received and that uh, also we could have, if we could have in the record of the uh, proceedings of the committee a confirmation that there's certainly no intended substantive change to the hazardous substances and new organisms legislation, uh, then I think that would also go a long way toward uh, uh, yeah, relating to uh, genetically modified uh, or organisms. Uh, then I think that would go a long way to allaying some of the uh, fears that the uh, mention of that legislation clearly raised in the minds of some submitters. But, sir, what I uh, wanted to, uh, to particularly draw the House's attention to were the three issues that the uh, Regulations Review Committee uh, drew to the attention of the Commerce Committee. Uh, and I'm going to do this because it's not entirely clear from the record what uh, the committee made of uh, one of those matters in particular. Uh, the first issue that was drawn to the attention of the committee uh, was one relating to the manner in which the original legislation was intended to be commenced. Uh, the provision uh, that had originally been inserted in the legislation uh, was that the uh, the bill would come into force uh, on a day to be appointed by the Governor-General and Council. Now, members, uh, I think, will be aware that over a number of years the Regulations Review Committee has expressed concern about this form of clause. Uh, essentially, it's a, it's a provision that's used very regularly overseas, particularly in Canada and the United Kingdom, but it essentially allows the Executive the power to proclaim legislation as opposed to uh, Parliament itself fixing a date for the legislation to come into force. And various reasons are used for uh, this sort of clause uh, as, as being favoured when it uh, does appear. The general uh, justification advanced is that officials need time to implement the uh, technical uh, matters that are referred to in the legislation and that until that implementation work has been carried out, uh, it isn't possible to set a firm uh, coming into force date. Well, sir, the problem with that uh, sort of argument is that we have seen in the last couple of years some extraordinary examples of delay in the coming into force of legislation. Uh, one, uh, one example in particular uh, involved a piece of legislation that was eight years delayed uh, between uh, the, uh, the passing by the Parliament of the legislation and, the, and its coming into force. And I'm pleased to see, sir, that uh, in the report back of this legislation, uh, Clause 2 is recommended to be amended uh, so that the coming into force clause uh, is either a date to be appointed by the Governor-General or a day that is 12 months after the date on which the Act receives the Royal Assent. It seems to me that uh, it's the earlier of those clauses that's an appropriate uh, response to the concerns that were expressed by the Regulations Review Committee. I'd like to thank the Commerce Committee for uh, essentially reaching a sensible uh, accommodation on that first uh, point of concern uh, that had been reached. Sir, there is a second concern and this is really where I'd like the Minister, if he would, to take advice from the officials and uh, take a call. Uh, the second issue 
uh, relates to the making of regulations without express controls, which is another major area of concern for our scrutiny committee. Uh, Mr Chairman. Charles Chevelle. Thank you, sir. Uh, this relates to Clause 28 of the Bill. Uh, 28, uh, clause 28 would insert a new Section 42C in the Hazardous Substances and New Organisms Act 1996. Uh, subsection 42C3 would provide a power to make regulations specifying the circumstances in which there is a low risk of adverse effects from developing new organisms in containment. Now this, I have to say, immediately relates to organisms that are not genetically modified. I want to stress that point. But it will allow applications to develop such organisms in containment to be rapidly assessed by the, explanatory, uh, by the, uh, uh, the Environmental Risk Management Authority. And there's an existing similar regulation making power in section 41 of the Act relating to so-called low-risk genetically modified organisms. It allows the Governor-General from time to time by order and council to make regulations specifying procedures, uh, specifying the probability that adverse effects will occur, specifying the circumstances in which genetic modification is a low-risk modification. So the proposed section 42C3 in the bill relates to organisms that are not genetically modified, as I said, but it contains wording similar to that currently found in the existing section 41C. And subsections 41A and 41B, which seem to relate to creating regulations specifying a standard process for making any assessment of risk of adverse effects from genetically modified organisms, have not been carried through into the bill uh, in relation to those non-genetically modified organi organisms. So under section 41, the standard process for assessing risk relating to genetically modified organisms must be promulgated by way of regulations. <laughs> This ensures appropriate transparency and future technical scrutiny by Parliament. But under the Bill, that safeguard is not carried through in respect of the assessment of risk for the development of organisms that are not genetically modified. Now, there's no explanation in the explanatory note uh, or in the report of the committee for the difference in approach between these two, uh, the existing section and the proposed new section. Uh, I would suppose that the difference is actually possibly contrary to the statement in the explanatory note, that it's intended that there be consistency in how applications are dealt with as between those relating to non-GMOs and GMOs. That's on page 26 of the original explanatory note of the bill. So I do think it's quite important, uh, just in respect of that assurance that I was asking for before and that uh, Leanne Dalzell referred to, uh, that we're, we're not seeing any sort of substantive change here in respect of GMOs and that the uh, decision not to have a consistent procedure as between GMOs and non-GMOs uh, is a considered one. I do think that's an important point. And really the issue here, sir, is that the regulation-making power in the proposed section 42C3 doesn't have any express controls placed on it by the bill. Uh, this is not consistent with the Legislative, Legislation Advisory Council guidelines. Uh, they say that although empowering statutes should not generally prescribe the procedure for making delegated legislation, consideration should be given in each case as to whether a procedure or any aspect of the procedure should be specified. This might include requirements for notice, consultation or confirmation by Parliament of any regulations that result. So, uh, it's, it's just not clear why the standard process that will be used to assess low-risk non-GMOs uh, uh, non is not to be promulgated by way of regulations to provide transparency and future scrutiny consistent with Section 41 of the Act. There may well be good reasons for the inconsistent approach, but they're just not apparent, and I think it would be, as I say, helpful if, if we could get an explanation from the uh, officials via the Minister of that point. Sir, I do have another... Uh, issue to raise. It's the third matter that was dealt with by the Regulations Review Committee. It relates to uh, clause, uh, sorry, part six uh, of the bill, but I apprehend that I might be running out of time on this call, so I'll, uh, I'll reserve that uh, matter for a future call. Thank you, sir.